we shall continue with the discussion on conformational analysis of one, I mean, disubstituted cyclohexane. And in this video, we shall have a discussion on one, three disubstituted cyclohexane. Now, in order, to, uh, in order to understand the conformations of uh, one, three disubstituted cyclohexane, we need to keep in mind all those details we, which we had discussed uh, regarding one, two disubstituted cyclohexane earlier. So with those uh, concepts, it will be easy for us to understand the conformational analysis of 1,3 disubstituted cyclohexane. Now we shall take up the simplest example, that is 1,3 dimethyl cyclohexane. Now, we can write in this form, that is the cis form, this is the cis form. Now, uh, when we write this, in, this is in the planar form. A plane, this is the planar structure. We know that it exists in the chair form, in the puckered form. So we'll write the chair conformation for this. When we say this is cis, it will be either alpha alpha or beta beta. I hope you know, understand what is alpha alpha and beta beta. Alpha means the bonds which are above the, I mean, below the plane of the chair conformer, and beta will be those groups which is above the plane in the chair conformer. Now here we have both the substituents, this is alpha alpha, sorry, beta beta, both the substituents in the axial position ab, above the plane. Okay, and 1 and 3, you see in chair conformation, 1 and 3 are placed above the plane. Okay, and so the uh, beta beta will be, uh, I mean the substituents will be in the axial position. Now when we flip this, uh, what happens you will get both the substituents in the equatorial position so this will be ee -E. it will be, it will remain beta beta both are above the plane but it will be in the ee -E form the uh, substituents will be oriented equatorially now when we look uh, at this uh, energy wise uh, stability wise we know that here these two methyl groups and one hydrogen on this carbon 5 will definitely be having the 1 3 diaxial interaction. And here it will be more because there are two methyl groups uh, in the diaxial position. So these two methyl groups will be interacting, uh, will be having uh, uh, steric hindrance also, and there will be one hydrogen over here on carbon 5 that will also be having dimethyl, uh, one, three dimeth diaxial interaction. So this is going to be very less stable. But when you look at this equatorial uh, confirmer, both the substituents are oriented equatorially. So there is not, I mean, there will not be any sort of diaxial interaction. So in that aspect, equatorial will be, equatorial confirmer will be more stable. We can even try with the Gotch butane units, I mean the butane units, then also you will find that the equatorial conformer is more stable. Well, uh, looking at the uh, optical activity, now this is found to be optically inactive. See, remember, uh, since equatorial conformer is more stable, almost or uh, all the compounds will exist in this form, in the equatorial conformer form. And when we check the optical activity of this compound, one three di cis one three dimethyl cyclohexane, we find that it is optically active. Now, when you look at this, there is a plane of symmetry over here, so this is optically active. We need not uh, do any other uh, uh, operations on this. We just looking at this itself, we can say it is optically inactive. Now you, you can even try out those mnemonics which we ha uh, which I had told you in order to check the optical activity of one two uh, uh, dimethyl cyclohexane. If you try that, then also you'll find that this is optically inactive. The same uh, plane of symmetry we can find uh, on the, in this planar molecule also. See, okay. So uh, one three dimethyl cyclohexane is optically inactive. 1,2 dimethyl cyclohexane was optically active but then, uh, I mean is chiral but then it doesn't have, uh, it doesn't show optical activity because the two pairs, the DL pair is non-resolvable. 
Now coming to the trans molecule. Now one will be alpha, the other one will be beta in the trans. So it will be alpha beta. Okay. And uh, when we write it, see one is alpha, or this is beta, this is alpha. So this is AE, axial equatorial, axial equatorial conformer. One substituent will always be in the alpha position and I mean alpha uh, plane uh, phase and the other one will be in the beta phase. Now when we flip this, what happens? The one which was in the axial orientation will go to equatorial orientation and the other one which was in the equatorial orientation will come to the axial. Now energetically when we look at this, both are going to be the same. They are same molecule. Okay. Now, uh, uh, when we check this uh, energetically, they will be having the same energy because in uh, the first compound, there will be one methyl group will be having, experiencing one three dioxyl interaction with the two hydrogen groups. In the same way, this axial methyl group in the flipped conformer, this axial methyl group, the alpha axial group will be having that one experiencing one three dioxyl interaction with the two alpha hydrogens. So uh, in uh, both the cases the en ex uh, excess energy coming up will be the same. So both are going to be the same. So uh, this molecule will be in the form like 50% in this form and 50% in the flipped form. Now checking out the chirality when we write the uh, mirror image of this, now before that, we can even uh, write this uh, in this fashion also. That is, the methyl group on carbon 1 uh, in the uh, equatorial and methyl group on carbon uh, 3 in the axial. Now, this is also AE. Now, the one uh, methyl group on carbon 1 is now in the um, beta, sorry, alpha position, and uh, that on carbon 3 is. Uh, beta okay so not much difference when you flip also or you get uh, the alpha beta remains same now if you just check it out all these four appear to be the same they are all the same I mean energetically also the same because there is one uh, axial substituent and the other one is equatorial when one is in the alpha the other one will be in the beta phase all right now, when we take the mirror image of this, what we get is something like this. And when we uh, check out the non -super, I mean, superimposability, why we find that they are non-superimposable mirror images. We can go for the mnemonics. You start from axial, you go to equatorial, you are taking in an anti-clockwise direction over here. Now here, axial to equatorial taking a clockwise direction. They are non-superimposable mirror images. And they are also resolvable. That's important. They are resolvable DL pair. Unlike the 1, 2, they are resolvable DL pair. So they, they will show optical activity. They can be, we can resolve it. We can separate these two. Alright. So uh, that is about the trans energetically also. This will be having, uh, this will be more stable than the uh, uh, cis AA, but less stable than the cis EE when you look at the Gauss units. Now we'll just check it out. Now, uh, the stability order of uh, the these uh, cis and trans 1 3 dimethyl cyclohexane will be uh, the equatory cis EE conformer will be the most stable one and then comes the trans AE conformer okay which will be the next stable and the least stable will be cis AA conformer and uh, we can say it does not it will not be there at all exist at all because there will be two dioxyl two methyl groups in the axial positions it's uh, difficult for this compound to exist Okay, now when you check out the but energy with respect to butane units, you can find here in cis EE, you can see here 1, 2, 3. This is, uh, if you put this as carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now this is carbon uh, 7 and 8. Okay, 7 and 8. This will be 8, 3, 4, 5, which is trans. 
okay and t in position then 8 3 2 1 this again is an anti position and then uh, apart from the six uh, cyclohexane I mean six uh, gauge units from the cyclohexane we'll get two anti units from this methyl group and another two anti units from this methyl group so you can see here 7 1 6 5 and 7 1 uh, 2 3 so all, all together you will have uh, six gotch units and four anti units so literally you can say that this compound is almost or this conformer is almost similar to the unsubstituted cyclohexane since we, we uh, there will not be any contribution of uh, excess energy due to this anti uh, anti butane units now when you come to trans ae what you find is there will be six gotch units from the cyclohexane ring and two units gotch units from the axial conform axial substituent and two anti units from the equatorial substituent okay so you can say take this equatorial substituent one two three here you have one anti conformer and another conform anti conformer on the uh, left side but for the axial substituent you have two gotch units here okay so Altogether, this trans uh, molecule, trans conformer of 1,3-dimethyl cyclohexane will be uh, having uh, two gotch units extra, two gotch butane units extra energy. Now, when you come to AA, this is AA, you find there are extra four gotch units introduced from the two axial methyl group. So, this will be less stable. Now, uh, what you can do is the way we had done for uh, 1, 2 disubstituted cyclohexane, you can try out all the gotch units, uh, all the butane units in each of these and then check out its energy. Now remember in 1, 2 we had an extra uh, gotch unit, an extra butane unit because the two groups were adjacent, substituents were adjacent. Here we don't find that, okay. We find only the, uh, uh, to every carbon atom added you get two extra butane units that's all in the other case since they were uh, adjacent to each other there was a common butane unit also in one two case all right so energy energy wise cis ee is more stable then comes trans aa ae and then comes cis aa so this is the case of a one three di substituted cyclomethane in one two di substituted cyclomethane it was the uh, other way around it. trans was more stable than cis all right so the, that uh, that uh, that point you must remember in one two and one three there is a difference all right it is there is a difference in cis and trans also regarding a a e e and now and all um, all right so check that out hope this is clear to you if you have any clarifications please feel free to ask thank you